Welcome to worship at Salem United Church of Christ, whoever you are and however you have found yourself here this morning, I would like to welcome you to worship. I'm Pastor Lawrence Richardson, and if you are joining us here in the sanctuary or on site, I would like to introduce you to our worship leaders for the day and leave you with a few announcements before we get underway. Uh, to my left and your right, we have our Minister of IT and today's guest preacher, J.M. Richardson. Uh, we have today our guest musician, Miss Sophia Franklin. Thank you so much, Sophia, for being here today. Wayne Burling, our tech assistant. Uh, and we are so grateful to Mina Cohen, our nursery attendant, for the day. Uh, we will uh, not have a uh, children's message, but we will have a very brief uh, opportunity to share stories and then follow worship uh, for anyone who would like to partake uh, there is fruit we have mandarin oranges and so uh, feel free at any time to take care of personal needs you can use this entrance here uh, to access the restroom and feel free to use the nursery or the children's corner at any time throughout our time together I have just a few announcements uh, before we begin. Happy birthday to everybody who celebrates in the month of July. Uh, happy birthday to you. We are so grateful for your life, for your presence here in this community, and we wish you a very blessed year ahead. If you would like to order altar flowers in honor or appreciation of a loved one or in memory of someone, uh, you can do so by contacting Kathy in the church office. The suggested donation for altar flowers is $20. On Tuesday nights, uh, we have AA group. Uh, it's an open and affirming group as well, so that means that all are welcome. 
Uh, there is a slight time change. Uh, the time is 6.30, not 7, 6.30 p.m. Uh, is the AA. Our Weavers Community Group meets on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 10 a.m. down in the lower level in the former choir room. If you have questions about the Weavers Community, you can contact Marilyn, and her email address is on the screen ahead of you. And last and certainly not least, we are online. Our website is salemucc.us, and we're on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Please like, follow, and share. And if you have content suggestions, I am also very happy to receive them. This brings us to the end of our announcements for the day. Now let us turn our hearts, our minds, and our spirits over into a spirit of worship and join together in our call to worship. Though many places in the world are bound in war, the peace of God is poured out for all people. Though discord and struggle have become factors in the lives of the people, the love of God is lavished on all people. Let us praise the God of love and peace. Let us listen to God's words of peace and justice for all people. Amen. Stand and join our opening hymn, O God of Love, O God of Peace, number 295 in the Red.
In thanksgiving for God's grace, we all sing, Great is the Lord. and 
to have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You are the potter, and I am the clay mold and may be. After that. surpasses the absence of conflict, enveloping a sense of wholeness and well-being extended to all creation. However, where can we find peace in a world wrapped with turmoil, insecurity, and mistrust? The answer lies in the teachings of Christ, who offers us a peace unlike any the world provides a peace that serves as an antidote to fear and anxiety. I'd like to invite the congregation, I'd like to invite you to participate in an interactive exercise, if you will. Please, a couple of questions. What is peace? What is peace? You can just yell it out. Silence. Silence? Peace is silence. Anybody else? What is peace? Calm, peace is calm. The absence of want. The absence of want. The absence of want. The absence of want is peace. Give me, let me get two more. Two more peace. We have silence, we have calm, we have the absence of want. I heard another one, I forgot it. Somebody said something else. Okay. The absence of conflict. The absence of conflict. So I heard that peace is silence. So let's have silence. is presented as a blessing and anointing to be shared. Numbers, the sixth chapter, verses 22 through 27, you know my preachers know this, illustrates a peace as the divine gift that can be imparted. That's what the scripture says. The Lord says to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face toward you and give you peace. Now to understand this essence of peace, we must consider the antithesis of peace. And I want to bring it up from different religious traditions so we can see it from the outside in, if you will. So of course Christianity says that sin or spiritual warfare is a counter of peace. It causes a chasm. Sin causes a chasm, according to some Christianity, between individuals and God, leading, leading to spiritual unrest or conflict. Now, in Islam, uh, salam is Arabic for peace. And the opposite of that, they believe, is discord, division, and chaos. Moving down to Buddhism, they believe that suffering, dissatisfaction, or stress 
is the antithesis of peace. And the ultimate goal is to overcome these and obtain what is called nirvana, which is the state of ultimate peace and liberation. Hinduism calls us samsara, which is the cycle of birth, the cycle of death, the cycle of rebirth that is fraught with suffering and desire. They believe that this is the opposite of peace. And they believe that shanti, which is the completeness of peace, will be achieved upon liberation. Finally, we talk about Judaism, who Salem comes from. Shalom is peace in Hebrew. And the antithesis of peace considers conflict, disorder, and strife uh, to come against the representation of wholeness, completeness, soundness, welfare, and tranquility, positive states of affairs rather than merely an absence of conflict. Notable peace theorist Johann Galtung offers a crucial dichotomy between a concept known as negative peace and positive peace, widely used in peace and conflict studies. Negative peace signifies the absence of direct violence where positive peace emphasizes the absence of structural and indirect violence. This comprehensive understanding of peace transcends the absence of conflict or war to encompass justice, equality, and human rights. Even the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke about this peace in the letter from Birmingham Jail in 1953 and wrote that negative peace is the absence of tension and positive peace, which is the presence of justice. Now, as I was writing this, I was reflecting on my own childhood journey. Living in Michigan in the foster care system, I was entered into three different foster care systems before I was two years old. And at this early age, even when I was becoming older, I understood the complexities of peace had to be intentional. You see, often in the settings in which I matriculated through the system, I would find myself in volatile and abusive situations making peace seem like an unreachable dream. Physical, mental, sexual violence were disturbingly commonplace. In fact, I endured painful experiences such as hot water being poured on my face while I was asleep, almost like I was being waterboarded. I had severe burns from scalding hot irons and even stab wounds while I was asleep. So in this, and through the grace of God, an unwavering commitment, I found out that I can still have peace. Now as I grew, I understood the discerning of the duality of peace, the negative and the positive aspects. Interestingly, I first experienced the negative peace when transitioning from the foster care system into homelessness. Despite this instability, triggering its conflicts, it also gifted me with the autonomy to carve out my own spiritual peace. This understanding has fueled my, res my resilience and drive to persevere. And here lies this synthesis of this conversation. Peace is not sought externally, but discovered within us through the presence of the divine. The book of Galatians teaches us that peace is a fruit of the spirit, of the spirit, an outcome of the divine spirits indwelling within us. Second Thessalonians, the third chapter, the 16th verse, offers comfort, underscoring that peace is a divine presence, a constant companion. It says, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in all ways. The divine be with you all. Messages in Philippians and Isaiah teach us that peace is born out of the divine's nature and is sustained through trust and discipline. The peace of the divine, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds.
The divine peace is not an elusive concept, but a living reality we can experience daily. We are encouraged to seek peace, become peacemakers, foster peace in our hearts, and extend it to others. We are called to be peacekeepers, custodians of peace, and vessels of peace. We, I have a sister in love that is a social worker, and when I first met her, one of our first conversations, she gave me this, this, uh, this amazing gem of, 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 of information. And I want you to do me a favor, if you will. If you can do me a real big favor, turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor quick and say to me, I am protected. I am protected. My peace. I am protecting my peace. And when she first said, I, was, I don't understand what that means, and she, she explained it, she said, what gives me peace, I am obligated to make sure that it remains intact. So it is my job to protect my own peace, and also my job to extend my peace to others. So, I give that to you for free, next time I have to charge you. <laughs> And what you should do, what you should do, what you should know, what you should feel is that peace is worth fighting for. Your peace is worth fighting for and the peace of those who are around you. Everyone has access to peace. I told you my story, went through some hell, but you still have access to peace. Whether it is through meditation, whether it is through acts of kindness, whether it is through community service, whether it is through prayer, whether it is through singing, whatever it is that cultivates your peace and keeps your peace, you are obligated to hold on to that for dear life. Amen? Amen. In the summer of 1985, I'm almost finished, in Ames, Iowa, the 15th General Synod of the United Church of Christ adopted a pronouncement saying, affirming in the United Church of Christ as a just peace church. The 15th General Synod affirmed just peace as an interrelation of friendship, justice, and common security from violence. They established as marks of just peace theology. I want to read one of them. It says this, peace is possible. A just peace is a basic gift of God and is the force and vision propelling human history. The meaning of a just peace and God's activity in human history, especially through the life and witness of Jesus, is understood through the Bible, church history, and the voices of the oppressed and those in the struggle for justice and peace. Nonviolent conflict is a normal and healthy reflection of diversity. Nonviolent conflict is a normal and healthy reflection of diversity. Working through conflict constructively should lead to the growth of both individuals and nations. End quote. So today, standing in Salem, synonymous of peace, I urge you to become peace practitioners. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Let God's peace guard your heart and your mind. Foster peace within the community, not just within oneself. Encourage each congregation, each congregation member to engage in activities that promote peace and harmony within the community, reinforcing the idea of peace as a collective responsibility. And in doing so, you will truly live in the realm of the divine, where righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit reign. May it be so, beloved. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. God of peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, we thank you for guarding our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus, inspiring us to be your people of peace, your instruments of peace in the world, in our homes, in our lives, in our community. God, you know our hearts. You know our dreams. You know the things that keep us up at night or that causes us anxiety or pain. And you also know what brings us peace and what gives us joy. Bring back to our remembrance those things that anchor us to you so that we can develop more skills to protect our peace in spite of whatever circumstances that exist. We ask for peace in our world. There is war and famine and controversy all over the place. And God, we just ask for your spirit of peace to reign. And for those in positions of power and prestige, we ask for their peace, peace of mind, peace in their hearts, a peaceful consciousness. And for those who feel forgotten and left behind, for those who don't feel like anybody in the world cares even about them, God, we ask for their peace, their peace of mind and the joy to return in their souls, help them to find peace in you. So that regardless of what others may say or do around them, that they know the source of true and lasting peace. God, we thank you for the ability to rise above our circumstances and to find you in the midst of everything. God, as we now turn our attention over to you in silence, we, we know that in this silence there is peace. And that in this silence there we will find you. As we open our hearts now, God, we ask that you receive us and our prayers in this silence. Friends, God is with us, and God hears and answers our prayers. Let us join our voices together, saying the prayer that Jesus taught his friends and followers. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for your prayers this morning, dear friends. Let us continue throughout the week in a spirit of prayerfulness. We are blessed to be a blessing. At this time, let us give back a portion of our gifts to God for the work and mission of God's church. Please join me. Let us give freely so we might be a blessing to those in need of God's abundance and grace. At this time, I invite you to give. Give of your heart, give of your faithfulness, give of your generosity to Salem United Church of Christ. 
The ways to give are on the screen ahead of you. If you are here in the sanctuary, you are also invited to leave your donation uh, in the offering plate uh, at the rear of the sanctuary. We are so grateful for all of your gifts, for all of the ways that you support and sustain the work of Salem Church, and for all those who are the recipients of these gifts. We give you thanks and we give God praise. Let us stand and join us in singing Thanksgiving to your our friends.